that day when I walked out of the chief's office at City Hall, I didn't feel so good. You see, I'm a reporter. Jim Bradford's my name. I broadcast on radio and television, and I cover a lot of stories. But this one scared me a little. Our greatest national resource was in danger. I wasn't thinking about oil or water or things like that. I was, well, thinking about kids, yours and mine. Youngsters are the future. Well, I know that school and church and government officials work hard to preserve this resource, not to mention all the efforts of mothers and fathers. But this story, it made me think. It was the story of five boys, ages 16 to 18. hubcaps and gasoline may become young men who dismantle entire automobiles or rob banks or enter the rackets. A kid with a doting parent can get too much too early. That can lead to a craving for more excitement than any teenager can handle. This is Jack Cruiser Bryan. His family is wealthy. He has never known his father. His mother spends most of her time in Las Vegas, Palm Springs, or New York. The choppers call him Torch. He's made a buck any way he could since he was six. He has seven brothers and sisters and a father with a fondness for spirits and can't afford a large family. Torch loves convertibles, pretty girls, ready cash. This is Tony the Snooper Pinelli. He can strip the valuables off a car in less time than some people can comb their hair. His story is of too many stepfathers. Tony can make a radio out of wire and tin cans. With proper guidance, he might have been a first-class engineer. This is Ben Shore, powerful as a wrestler, with a wonderful sense of humor, and the idle time to be a chopper. Still growing, his brain hasn't caught up with his biceps. Flip Johnson isn't sure if he's 16 or even 19. He was left with an aunt and uncle who have a family of their own. His first theft was a peanut butter sandwich at school. Now he'll steal anything he can carry or load on a truck. Fast with a knife, he's convinced he can bluff his way out of any sort of trouble. Okay, come on, let's flip it. Here we go. Oh. One more. Over she goes. That's all the time we got. Sounds like these hens are allergic to smoke. Reminds you of my mother. They got the pip, that's why they squawk. Well, I sure hope it isn't contagious. I hate to break up with these chicks. Cruiser says they're the best investment we ever made. Hey, would you
just in time. See the pickup coming? Cruiser was right. You said we'd have to knock on it. I can't understand it. There, there now. After all, it's only a car. What about it, Mr. Snyder? There's only one thing to do. To go back to the station, phone the police. Sure looks like the choppers have been here. The choppers? Yeah, it's a gang of thieves operating across the whole county. Well, what about the car? What, what can we do? Well, if I were you good people, I'd forget it. The total wreck. Let the insurance company worry about it. we we'll go back to the service station. I'll pick up the tow truck and tow it in. In a yard. Don't get up. Punk. Matter, cowboy. Your chickens ain't getting enough exercise. I'm trying to make them happy. See, I told you. Looks to me like you're trying to drive them crazy. They ain't laid so much as one egg in a week. Neither have we. Five jobs, just like that. We can count. Oh, the brain. Just once, why don't you show up on time so you can lift something? Oh, I just thought maybe there was something I could use on my heap. Just think, cowboy. Half an hour ago, this pile of junk was moving 60 miles an hour. You think the square John even knows he's been hit yet? Oh, he does now. I'm giving him ten minutes to weep over his wreck. He should be on the phone right now, crying his little heart out to the cops. Okay, goodbye. Well, it's the choppers again. They cut up a new car all on 18 while some guy and his wife went after a can of gas. Speaking of wives, <laughs> means I won't make it home tonight. Ah, uh, poor Mary will understand. She was having friends then, too. Anytime I eat a sandwich, I can always tell when the hell her mother made it. Boy, I'd better call Tom Hart. After all, those insurance investigators are as anxious to grab those choppers as we are. Tom may want to ride along. She never puts anything on a sandwich that make it swallow easy. No butter, nothing. Ah, uh, she probably just forgot. Forgot? Forgot my eyes. She wants to choke me to death. Hello, let me speak to Tom Hart, please. Hi, Tom. Frank Fleming. Car theft detail. Yeah. Just got a call from out on number 18. The choppers pulled off another job. Thought you'd like to go along. All right, Frank. How about my picking you up on the way over? Right, about ten minutes, all right? Bye. Well, that's it for today, beautiful. So, I suppose you forgot all about the steak dinner you promised me. Dinner, schminner. We'll both be eating birdseed if Frank and I don't break up that chopper gang. Oh, I hate you. Oh, no, we can't do that. Tell you what, a feed you on the way, huh? On the way? <laughs> suppose I'll settle for another hamburger if Joe's driving. Oh, now, beautiful. You know a big steak has too many calories. You're so thoughtful all of a sudden. Entertain your friends, she said, for a fuller, richer life. I entertain my lawyer. And my sweet and loving wife. And I want to tell a story. Out of money, boys. Out of money. Yeah, it's ten cents in the dollar, and you know it. You give us the same story every time. Grease this palm, Big Daddy-o. Peel off those cabbage leaves. Every time I see that loaf of bread, I flip. Some night, Moose, you go home with me. Like tonight, kid? Keep counting, Moose. He's just talking, and don't get shook. Eighty, eighty-five, eighty-six, eighty-seven, eighty-eight, eighty-nine, eighty-ten, eighty-eleven, eighty-twelve, eighty-thirteen, eighty-fourteen, e
Five. That's the kind of music I like. The sweet whisper of them greenbacks kissing each other. Oh, man. Well, it's better than the cowboy singing those lullabies. You better like to hear him sing. When he stops, it means a fuzz is here. We're scared, silly. It's 200 even. Mucho gracias. Split it up on the outside. You guys bother me. For you, Moose. Anything. Let's cut out and grab some grub. Some guy will stick a shiv in you someday, Moose. Hoarding all that bread. That'll be the day, kid. Punks. You gotta admit, though, them kids really move. Yeah. Someday somebody's gonna have to slow them down. They're getting a little too cocky. Somebody like the moose? If you lose those parts, the junk detail will be here first thing in the morning. Don't worry, boss. Ain't they always? Yeah, always. <laughs> See you in the morning. Entertained your lawyer, said my sweet and loved wife. They hit hard and fast. There's no amateurs in this outfit. Oh, no. These guys are artists with their torches. Come here. Look at this. It must have taken five or six of them to drop in this baby. Well, it's worth the energy. <laughs> Makes it easy to get at the goodies. The owner says he ran out of gas. But he's sure he filled it up in town. Well, I must have drained most of it. Just left enough to get out here. No, Tom, there's too much margin for error that way. They drain it completely dry, and then put enough back in to call their shots. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. It must have been that way, right? Come on, are you going to be here all day? It's getting late. There's no chance of picking up any tire marks on this stuff. It's way past supper time. Yeah, it's a chopper's all right. They're getting as regular as a TV show. Well, I'll put the junk detail on it the first thing in the morning. Meanwhile, you have your insurance agents give me all the numbers. Right. And we'll call these spots. Maybe one of these days we'll get a break. Look, I don't care where we eat. Let's just eat, okay? Did I hear you say something about being hungry? Oh! Feathers, chicken feathers. Must be from one of your other chips. Oh, cut it out. Fine thing, not a single clue. See, how about a kiss? Oh, she's beautiful in them pants. You know, it's not that I like girls so much, but there's something about the way they're built. How about five cheeseburgers, cutie? Yeah. I admit that I like girls, but girls don't like me. The cruiser keeps telling me to get contact lenses. Sure. They give your eyes that, uh, that dreamy look. Let's all go over to Susie's pad after midnight. I could go eight for you, baby. That's lot. What I do, baby? Kiss me. Where's all the girls? You guys got anthrax or something? <laughs> Get a load of that big smooch. Talk about tall in the saddle. Yeah, couple of fanatics. They go wall to wall. Get a load of the shimmers on that tank. I got the message, man. I got the message. Put your tools away. These aren't exactly business hours. I bet. The fanatics ought to be ashamed. Chomping up a big love nest right here in front of us young people. Things like that is a bad influence on Ben. Go on, Snooper. Pick up a couple extra bits. You shouldn't shake him all up like that, Ben. You know he'll do anything. Gotta keep our boy happy. You drinking? Only with my eyes. Here, keep the change. Look, Flip's got a place case nice for the chicks, maybe. Give me the layout, Flip. I'll cruise it and call in right after school. Get a load of that candy and cake. Wow! 
That's what I call genuine laughing plastic. Well, thank you. Gosh, am I star? It's pure allure, all right, but eyeball the fuzz. That won't snoop her in. That ain't fuzz. Cruiser calls it fuzz, that's good enough for me. He can smell a pit of Catalina. You square with a joy I ain't on fuzz. Fade. A lot faster inside. Be even faster if you went straight in the kitchen. Serve it yourself, wouldn't it? You don't get merchandise like that in no supermarket. How does Fuzz rate that carriage class? Hey, that reminds me. I got a date with Gypsy tonight. I'm cutting out. Yeah, we better get out of here, too. I don't like the clientele in this place. It's getting lousy. Hey, what's the action? We're getting out. You guys better do the same. That smoocher comes up for A, he's gonna start screaming for those hubcaps. Big men, scared out by a little heap. Yeah. You know, I think this fuzzy little car is sick. Hot head, might need an emergency operation. Oh, I agree. By all means, let's operate, Doctor. Scalpel? Scalpel, Doctor. Start. Say, Tom, don't you have any hubcaps? Hey, my battery's gone. Your radio's gone, too, darling. What? And your carburetor. You've been stripped, pal. Oh, no. <laughs> really, Tom? <laughs> all right, all right. Now, don't you dare laugh. All right, you either. Excuse me, Tom, but it is kind of funny. <laughs> I don't see anything funny. <laughs> Nothing. I've been waiting for you for hours. Hiya, Pop. What's the matter? We got to get to the store. That's what's the matter. You know my truck's broke down. No sweat. I'll take, Mom. Your mother's cooking supper. She can't get away. I'll go then. No sweat. What you need? Well, as a matter of fact, she don't need nothing. I'm, I'm a little short, son. You got any money on you? Sure I got money. Get in, you know they won't sell it to me. What's all the fuss about? If you're out of booze, why don't you just say so? <laughs> That's a good boy, son. I knew you'd get it for me. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Right. Oh, yes, sir. I've had more police cooperation than I've ever had before in my life. The auto theft and junkyard boys are all over the place. They've given it the fine-tooth comb treatment. They'll come up with absolutely nothing, nothing. Well, we're up against a pretty smooth operation. The choppers chopped again yesterday on Route 18, dismantling a new automobile in broad daylight. Later that evening, investigators have their own car stripped off. Well, sir, I, I... I don't need any more help, sir. I just need a little more time, and I think I can come up with something. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Look, beautiful, if you read that bit just one more time, I'm going to fire you. And I've never been more sincere about anything before in my life. I'm sorry, Tom. Really, I am. Well, don't get so shook about it. Well, of course I'm shook. I'm one half as shook as Frank is in the police department. I laugh at those poor guys out of City Hall. Chief of Police has even called a special meeting. Frank called me and asked me if I'd go with him. Oh, the poor guy feels like an idiot. Imagine how that makes you feel. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Look, um, usually you are going to let me use that little car of yours, aren't you, while mine's being fixed? Huh? Oh, sure. On, um, one condition, though. Huh? 
I'd like something left for a souvenir. Uh, maybe a couple of bolts or a wheel or, you know. Hey, cut it out. What's so interesting? Genius. Get away, Gypsy. Can't you see? I'm reading about a new kind of axle. Get all bugged about an axle. Oh, listen. With this little trick, I can get another 20, maybe 30 miles per hour, and with less RPM. Well, that's what I don't understand about men. Here we, we have a pool and a hi fi. And you talk about axles and RPMs and all that junk. Well, this is what I don't understand about women. They're always nagging a guy. Oh, I didn't mean to. I don't want a nag. You see, well, that, that's why my pop walked out on Mom. Gee, I sure wish I'd have known my old man. He liked speed, too. Guess he was a really great flyer. He was the hottest pilot in his outfit. I bet he was cute. Just like you. The Japs dived on him when he was drifting down in a parachute. Machine gun. Poor Pop. He didn't have a chance. I, um, uh, I bet I can beat you. Three laps, freestyle? Come on! Is this everything? I'm not kidding you awake, am I? Oh, no, officer. It's just that we do so little business here, I sort of got in the habit of taking a little nap in the sun once in a while. According to this ledger, you don't do much business. You mean that's all there is? Oh, absolutely, officer. Well, old Moose wouldn't buy a Hershey bar without writing it down in that dirt book. Yeah, I'll bet. I can't afford to take any chances. Uh, not if you want to stay in business. Find anything? What are you doing with that thing? It's protection. Never know where to get held up around here. There are thieves after my kind of merchandise, too, you understand. I understand this. Somebody around here is dealing hot stuff. And we find a party, they're going to cool off up the river. And you better get rid of that can. It might get you in trouble. Get in that car, Dennis. Uh, drop in any time. Don't worry, we will. Thinking junk detail. I'd like to let him have both barrels. Boss, that stuff's piling up. It's all I could do to hide it. Them kids are bringing it in faster than we can get rid of it. Yeah. Maybe we ought to chop off a few of them choppers, huh? Yeah. Pow! 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 Ah, uh, knock it off, cowboy. Here, get some hot dogs. Good spot up above here, so I'll keep you in, Phil. Got you. Take off. What a set of wheels. Come on, move it. This is JB, in position testing. Can 
can you read me? Loud and clear, J.B., loud and clear. All clear. Proceed according as planned. I'm standing by, Roger, and out. There's a poor but cat named Conga Joe. Got a crazy pad down in Borneo. His little black feet to his fuzzy duck tail. He's a gone cool cat with a jungle quail. Calling Square John has returned. I repeat, Square John has returned ahead of calculated schedule. May involve PD. I repeat, may involve PD. PD will be blasting up here, PD. Q. Yeah. Load up. And leave the wheels. Double speed three. JB calling. Quit dragging your tails. Expedite. I repeat, expedite. Yours are sound great, Tony, just like TV. Don't do rubbish yet. We've already been to that. What's the matter? What? It's a flat! Hey, Ben, bring out the tag! Mobile unit LT, calling JB. Come in, JB. This is JB. What is wrong, mobile unit? You've stopped. Over. We've got a flat tire. Estimated delay, three minutes. Over. Tough luck, mobile unit. A mobile unit, mobile unit, unidentified vehicle approaching from side road may be abandoned. Having any trouble? Oh, flat tire, eh? Yeah, Papa, we don't need any help. I should think not. Poor young huskies like you. I told you, Papa, we don't need no help. Well, I didn't offer any. I just like chickens. What kind are they? White ones. Do you want to sell them? No, I don't want to sell them. Now, fuzz off, will you, Buster? You're blocking the highway. Mobile unit, bandits. Bandits, cut out. What are they, layers? No, they're not layers, and they're not for sale. Now, burn out, mister. Oh. We love them chickens. Okay, okay. You don't have to get so hard about it. What's the matter with you? You... Mobile unit to JB. We had to get off the air for a while, but we're moving now and all is well. Over. Mobile unit, there are bandits approaching. I repeat, bandits. And you are on a dead end street. Reverse. I repeat, reverse. If we reverse, we'll be going right back to the cops. Uh, Who's know what he's doing? Hey, what's going on? Here they come! 
We'll beat him to the corner. Yeah, but if we turn right, we're heading straight for him. And if we turn left, we're going back to the wreck. JB, JB, can you see us? Which way do we turn, left or right? Over. Turn left, mobile unit. I repeat, turn left. I can see you. Keep it quiet. Howdy, officer. Uh, was we going too fast? Well, look at a stolen car. Have you seen anything of a blue car with a white top? No, sir, but I seen a green car with a white top. It passed us back there in peace. Well, that was a, a white car, wasn't it, with a red tie? What was it, a blue car or a white car? Well, I don't know, but um, it was going that way. Uh, no, it wasn't. It is coming this way. All right, let's start all over again. I think he is. He pretty hit you fellas. Darn, I hate them smart Alex. All right, you guys can go. Thanks just the same. Just sorry we can't help you none. There's nothing on the wheels that'll catch up with a cruiser. Just like this when you found it, huh? Just like that. It didn't stay stolen very long. Well, they never do. What do you think, Tom? Well, insurance rates are going up again. The choppers. Sure, who else? This job was done by experts. You say? <clears throat> you say this was a hot shot call? The car had just been stolen, huh? Yes, sir. The owner said not more than ten minutes. I let him go. He was late for work. How much time do you figure to do this? Well, it's not a complete job. But I'd say at least ten minutes. Ten You want an introduction? Ten minutes, huh? That would put you and the choppers in this area about the same time. Did you see anybody? Nobody that could have done it. Did you see anybody who couldn't have done it? He was a kid in a hot rod. He almost ran into us when we were talking to our truck driver, but he came from the wrong direction. Kid in a hot rod? Was he alone? Yes, sir. There isn't much traffic on this road. Well, I'm... Uh, will you please wait for us in the car? What did I do? Will you just please wait for us in the car? Big deal. Now, if you don't mind, let's get back to that truck driver. Just a couple of kids hauling poultry. Poultry? What kind of poultry? Chickens, a whole mess of them in crates. White chickens? Yeah, come to think of it, white. What's this? Well, the last time the choppers hit, Liz picked a chicken feather just like that off my sleeve. I want to talk to you. Why not? Snooper says you had a close call today. What's the matter? You worried about us? No, kid. I worry about me. You guys have been pulling too many jobs lately. I think you ought to lay off for a while. Do you really think so, Moose? Yeah. You guys are getting too hot. You got the junk detail coming here every day. Well, that's your problem. That's right. The answer is we don't do no more business for a while. Here's the tally, boss. We owe them 128 bucks. Hey, Torch, you want to hear something funny? The moose thinks we ought to knock off for a while. Like the gasser. What's the matter, Chubby? We making too big a dent in your bankroll or something? 
I'm just trying to tell you that for your own good, you gotta get smart. Don't do no more jobs until the heat's off. Well, maybe we like it hot. Then you better take your business someplace else. <laughs> What's so funny? You are, Moose. If you think you can shut us off, you'll buy anything we bring in as long as we're in business. One word to the junk detail and you're out of business. Well, that's even funnier, isn't it, Torch? Listen, fat stuff. If we go down, you go down, and don't you forget it. This whole operation was your idea. We were just a bunch of punk kids stealing hubcaps for kicks. But who showed us where the big money is? And who rigged up the torches? And showed us how to chop a car? I never even knew what the word meant until you and I started having our little talks. That's right, Cruiser. And you know what else, Moose? You'll even get an extra bolt for contributing to the delinquency of miners. Say the word, boss. The word's 120. What? Eight. <laughs> sure, boys. Only let's make it 130, shall we? It's a nice round figure. Now, boy, put that away. After all, like they say, we're partners. Here. There it is! Green! My favorite color! Ah, Ulysses, take me to your leader. So long, partner. Come on. I've got one just like that, cowboy. Someday I'll show it to you. Just lay down and let them walk all over you. Don't be as stupid as they are. Any trouble right now and we'd all end up in the jug. But tomorrow, that's going to be a different story. What's tomorrow going to change? <laughs> By tomorrow, I want everything those junk punks ever lifted out of here. I want this yard picked clean. Dump the stuff at cut prices if you have to. Yeah, but boss, we we'll lose dough. I'll get it back. I'll break in a new bunch of rats. Might even expand a bit and go in for the big stuff. But I don't want nothing here that'll tie me in with the choppers. We still got the truck and the chickens. Then after they drive out of here on their next job, I close the gate behind them, and they can yell copper all they want, but they can't prove nothing. Boy, I never knew there were so many produce companies in this town. That's a blank wall, too, Tom. No, I don't think so. I think those chickens are the answer to our problem. Yeah, you may be right. I know we've been running around like a couple of chickens with their heads cut off. Well, that's our job. Our job is to get those choppers. I agree. Now, here's what we're going to do. So far, the choppers have pulled all their jobs in this area. That's because there's not too many houses and the service stations are far and few between. Now, you know we don't have enough men to keep the uh, whole area under surveillance. But we do have enough to keep tabs on one road at a time. Stake out, huh? Yeah, exactly. So I'll put the bite on the cheap for a new car, and we'll have it run out of gas right here. Then the driver will walk back to the service station, and we'll be where we can see what happens. And what happens if nothing happens? Well, we go on to the next road. And the next. And the next. All right. All right, I'm with you. Meantime, I'm late for a date. See ya. Later. Frank, wait, don't do it. How is Mother made that? If you're not used to them, kill yourself. Put it down, please. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to risk a half of one anyway. That's your funeral, right? Well, with all this work we got ahead of us tonight, getting ready for the stakeout, I'll never make it home on time. I thought you were going to take me and the kids to the movies. Yeah, I thought I was going to take my wife and kids to a lot of places, a lot of nights. Listen, check the garage and see what kind of a car we can get for tomorrow. Well, I'm hungry, but I've had it too. Whew. If 
If I were you, buddy, I'd do like the man says. Why should I? I was here first. Well, this is a democracy, isn't it? You better move. Well, that's just it. That guy had no right to bull his way around. Gee whiz. That sure is a beautiful paint job. Probably got 50 coats and lacquers. Man! But you can't even scratch it, Ben. What's a big idea? Them aluminum hubcaps sure are soft. Look at that, will you? Are you crazy? Oh, is this your car? Of course it's my car. What are your names? Me, Geronimo. He, Chief Crazy Horse. We scout things like you. We are just a couple of small businessmen. I'm not afraid of you, Ralph. Oh, Norman, please, let's go. You better listen to the cutie, Norman. Yeah, she is cute, ain't she? She is. Oh, come on, Norman, please, let's go. Nerve. You notice how he stole that tray? What a thing to do. Get lost, will you, Cruiser? Gypsy and I want to smooch a little. Well, don't get any ideas about Gypsy, because you're with a lady now. I'm sorry, Snooper, but you're just not my type. I bet if I had me some contact lenses, I could look real dreamy. <laughs> I'd better call Mom. Order me a hamburger. Without onions. Without onions. My brother used to drive. Nearly bankrupt the family. Yeah, nearly five thousand bucks right here. Really? I don't have a rod like this, but I'm a lot better looking than him. Besides, I'm free. You want to see your muscles? Can I? Heaven. What'll it do? Dollar fifty. Maybe more when I get my new axle. Six jugs. Cherry all the way. Want to go for a little moonlight and roses? Remember, no contact lenses, dear. The mother night, it might be a real blast, but uh, right now I'm kind of busy, so I'll talk to you later. Anytime, baby. 
any time. Partner, she can have my ranch and all my cattle. Down, boy, down. What in the world is... It's a wonder that some of these kids don't freeze to death. Look, I, uh, I'm not knocking it, but why? Jack Bryan, 132 North Lafayette, Toluca Woods. Huh? Well, that's the registered owner of a hot rod that exactly fits the description of the one that almost ran down the two policemen this afternoon. Come, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. That's all I want. Come, baby. Let's go to the scene and the be long gone from the bowling green. Monkeys in my hat, fam. I can do a handstand. Got plenty money in my old blue jeans. Be long gone from a bowling green. Be long gone from a bowling green. Well, I got a cheery Chevy and a tank full of gas and a chronic hypertension for moving fast. Monkeys in my hat, fam. I can do a handstand. Got plenty money in my old blue jeans. Be long gone from a bowling green. I know a friend with a big connection, live it up with a wide selection. Come baby, got protection, you got, you got anything you want. Come baby, let's cruise the scene and be long gone from a bowling green. Monkeys in my hat band, I can do a handstand. Got funny money in my old blue jeans. Be long gone from a bowling green, be long gone from a bowling green, be long gone from a bowling green. Give us a hand. Sorry, buddies. I got an important stop to make. Is it still Charlie Blue One? Charlie Blue One. Who the heck is Charlie Blue One? Shh. It's a military secret. They'll be going any minute now. Taking the chicks out for a little air. Any objections, partner? None at all, partner. Lock the gate. There'll be trouble when they come back and can't get in. Yeah. Maybe we ought to tip off the cops and make sure they don't get back. You mean think? <laughs> Just a ninety. I get the ideas. You just lock that gate. Then maybe you ought to oil up that pea shooter of yours, huh? Can I wear my holster? I can draw faster. Why not? Ah, oh, come on. Lock that gate. Hi, Jim. Should have known we couldn't hide from you. Well, you almost did. I just about got lost coming up the back way. Say, hey, meet Tom Hart, uh, National Car Theft Bureau. Jim Bradford, Worldwide well, Broadcasting. Well, I listen to you every night. Thanks. Uh, almost. <laughs> got a broadcast from up here? No, we'll just record now and put it on the air later. Uh -huh. You know what's happening? They filled me in down at headquarters. Sounded pretty interesting. Thanks. You think we'll see any action? Oh, well, we think so. Just take out, it's get awful tiring, but we have good reason to believe the kids will hit pretty soon. You think the choppers are kids then? Well, we're pretty sure. We don't know. 
Start talking. Here comes Officer Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jim Bradford, your news reporter, on a hilltop overlooking Highway 18 east of the city. This is the police department stakeout. One of the many attempts of your police force to apprehend a gang of auto wreckers who've been given the name of the choppers because of the manner in which they operate. Right now, I'm watching Officer Frank Martin in plain clothes. He's in the act of running out of gas on a deserted section of highway, just as you and I've done at least once in our lives. He's getting out of his car, cursing himself for passing that last gas station. Now he looks about for help, and there is none. There never is. There's nothing that he can do but start walking back to the nearest gas station. And now he's starting out to walk. Here on the hill, there's nothing to do but just wait. Perhaps nothing will happen on the highway here below us today, but of this we can be almost certain. Somewhere in the area today, a gang of car strippers will strike. And you and I will pay some of the bills and higher insurance premiums. I understand that you're not fishing on this, that you've really got a lead, Frank. This just for you? Just for me. Some kid with a $5,000 hot rod. <whistles> yeah, five Gs. He's been known to be in the vicinity as the choppings. He might be a lookout. We've been tailing him and getting reports on him. Hey, Frank, car 13 reports that Brian kid is heading right this way. That's the one. This is Fleming in car 9. Tell car 13 to drop back and give the suspect room. I repeat, give him room. JV calling mobile unit. JV calling mobile unit. Stand by. I'm on target, Charlie Blue 1. I'll buzz it and let you know. Over and out. Hey, what's the big idea? Never mind, baby. I might have a job to do. Wait a minute. Here comes something. Well, it didn't stop. It's not supposed to. It's just a lookout. If he finds everything clear, then the choppers come in. And right away. Well, how can he contact him? We haven't figured that out yet. going on around here? Look, baby, I told you I might have a job to do. Job? Well, what kind of a job? Never mind. There they are. You were right, Tom, and so help me, they're carrying a load of chickens. Chickens? Seven and 
Wade should have to chase them down this road here. You gonna have to use that? I hope not. Well, I hope not, too. But they're just kids. Yeah, probably. <laughs> We can have this truck chopped up into little pieces, and no one can prove a thing. How much cruiser doing with gypsy in this car? Too late to run. Remember, you're in this too. <laughs> Not me. I'm holding you for the cops. I'm a respectable citizen. I've seen my duty and I've done it. Why, you dirty fink. And you too, cowboy. <laughs> Let her alone. It's been a half hour already. What do you suppose they're waiting for? Who knows? Maybe the policeman's ball. How is it? I, I don't know. It's a little numb. Should it be? You boys in there. You choppers. This is Lieutenant Fleming speaking. Now you're surrounded and there's no escape. We don't want any more shooting. There's been enough already. So I'll give you just five minutes to come out of there with your hands up. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the voice of Lieutenant Frank Fleming speaking to the three boys who are trapped inside. Do you think they'll give themselves up, Lieutenant? I don't know. I sure hope so. And if they don't? Then we'll just have to take them the hard way. I see. Thank you, Lieutenant. For the benefit of those who've just tuned in, this is Jim Bradford with another on-the-spot broadcast coming to you from the Big Deal Junkyard where three young car strippers have been cornered and are awaiting capture. Now, 
I've just been informed that the father of one of the boys trapped inside is here. I'll see if I can get him to say something. Excuse me, sir. Oh, reporter, huh? Well, that's all right. We won't bother about that it. That ain't no bother. Did you tell everybody my boy Torch is in there? No, I didn't. Well, how's anybody going to know it's him? They got my boy Torch, Torch Lester, in there. The smart cops think they got him. Please, Mr. Lester. What's the matter? This is a free country, ain't it? Can I talk? I want to tell the whole world something. Those cops ain't going to take my boy Torch. There ain't enough cops in the whole world to take my boy Torch. You hear me? They ain't going to take my boy Torch. Ladies and gentlemen, when you pick up your morning newspaper and read about some youngster getting into trouble and wonder why, I think you've heard one good answer. Frank, they found a couple of places where they can drop over the fence. And I found this in the kid's car. Well, what do you know? A rigged up transmitter. Just think of what that kid might have been, huh? Yeah, too bad. Well, they have one minute left. I'd better tell them. You have one minute. One minute left. Now, give yourselves up. Don't make us come in and get you. Listen to that fuzz. Next thing you know, they'll be crying. Yeah, they're all alike. They just want to get us out in the open so they can cut us down. Did they do that? Sure they would, but they're not going to get a chance. This pile of iron's like a fort. We can stay here forever. Well, at least till we get hungry. Time's up. Well, looky here. <laughs> How about that? You shooting? No. What, something wrong with Cowboy's gun? There's nothing wrong with this. Here. Look. I think we ought to give up. We can't get out of here and you know it. So we take a couple of lousy cops with us. Well, what will that get us? The gas chamber. He's right, and I don't want to go out that way. So you're yellow. No, and I'm not stupid either. So we had a ball stealing hubcaps and then starting after the big stuff, but the ball's over. At least let's get out of this alive. Now who's stupid? I just killed a cop, and the law says you two help me. Chew on that. I uh, wish I'd never seen Moose. Wish I hadn't brought Gypsy in this. Ladies and gentlemen, what started with the theft of a pair of hubcaps has ended in the violent death of five persons. How do you feel, son? I ain't saying nothing until I get a mouthpiece. How about... Torch! Knock it off, Pop. Find someone else to buy your booze. You got anything to say, son? Yeah. We had a ball. A real ball. That's the story of the choppers. The three boys left alive faced jail and disgrace. One probably imprisonment for life. This is Jim Bradford saying goodbye for now.